Good afternoon everyone. You are very welcome to today's live stream where I am going to be speaking about being a highly sensitive woman. Now fingers crossed my internet's going to stay on. It was a little bit dodgy there just before I came on the call so fingers crossed. Have a pen and paper handy, have some water handy and if you're sensitive like me you might actually need some tissues handy because what I'm going to share might just trigger something within you and if it does that's okay. Now I have some notes because I want to stay on track. If you saw my post earlier during the week I asked, I posted a number of questions and they are the questions that I'm going to be discussing today because I'm on a mission to help highly sensitive, sensitive, empathic, intuitive women to thrive in this world and like I'm a walking, talking, living, breathing, highly sensitive woman and I wish that I knew all those years ago what I know now because it would have saved me a lot of heartache, it would have saved me a lot of stress, a lot of overwhelm, a lot of anxiety. So this is why I am opening up the Sensitive Solution, a sacred haven for sensitive women to thrive and it's going to start in September because there's a little bit more to it than I realised um, and I'm being actually shown uh, different methods of healing uh, over the past whatever number of weeks since I actually announced it so it's like I'm being prepared to deliver particular stuff um, as well so have a pen and paper handy, make yourself comfy because us sensitives do like to be comfortable. Our environment is very important to us. If you need to, to wrap a blanket around you, um, do that by all means, whatever you need to make comfortable. Please comment on this post. If you feel that something that I'm sharing of, sharing re resonates with you, just say, yes, you know, that feels true for me. Or feel free to ask any questions about what I'm going to speak about and um, if I don't answer them on this call sometimes I don't see the comments on the call so my laptop open here as well but if I don't answer questions on the call or if I don't respond to comments I will come in afterwards and I will do that so I'm just um, I'm not ignoring you now I am just kind of setting up the laptop scrolling down just to refresh it and just see. So say hi in the comments so that I can know that you hear me, that you see me, um, so that I'm not talking to myself. Uh, um, okay, so I see that so I can refresh that there if needs be. So you're very welcome. So glad that you are taking time out to join me. I have notes. I possibly will go on for about 20 minutes. Hi Tricia, you're very welcome. So again, I'm inviting you to have a pen and paper handy because, you know, the term highly sensitive, sensitive, empathic, intuitive, if you're in my world, you know, you're familiar with those. However, I observe people who I feel intuitively are not truly aware of their sensitive nature but they're struggling in some ways. They might be struggling with, uh, with some nervousness, with some anxiety, with uh, just feeling misunderstood and all of the things I'm gonna speak about today. And as I say, I am a living, breathing example of what it's like to be a highly sensitive woman. And for years, I actually felt like it was a curse because I felt so different, I felt I felt like I was from a different planet at times. I'm going to talk about this because that has been my experience. And I know women I've worked with have said the same. There are times when I distinctly, distinctly remember saying in my life, I feel like an alien sometimes. Because what we have to remember in this is there is nothing wrong with us. Highly sensitive actually is a very gifted trait. However, we are 20% of the population. There's been research that has been done probably quite a while ago on this now. I couldn't find the book that I um, first came across that. I just don't have 
have it handy. Uh, it may have been Heidi Sawyer who mentioned that there are different people, uh, well-known people who have, who, who, whose sole purpose is to serve highly sensitive people. And for me, that is my sole purpose as well, because everyone who comes to me, whether they're man or woman, they have a level of sensitivity. And now I can see that, in fact, there is nothing wrong with me. I'm not going crazy. Yes, I'm different because I process the world in a different way to somebody who is not under the umbrella of being a sensitive, highly sensitive, empathic, intuitive person. So we're on this planet together for a reason. Um, and I'm going to put on my glasses so that I, um, I, I share what I want to share. So first of all, there is nothing wrong with you. I want, I want, to, I want to really uh, bring this home for you. And I'm going to be diving in much deeper into these topics in my membership. And I'll talk about that towards the end again. You might, the, the amygdala in our brain is actually created differently. It's, it's documented that it's triggered more easily to, um, to sights, to sounds, to smells. So it responds different, it reacts differently to somebody who doesn't have a highly sensitive nervous system. What that does then, it triggers the cascade of cortisol and adrenaline in our bodies. If we do not know how to manage this, if we don't know how to manage our nervous system, how to bring peace and calm into our mental, emotional, physical and spiritual bodies on a daily basis, then we are set up for chronic fatigue, for burnout, for uh, high levels of anxiety, for going into depressive states and um, all of that stuff. This, and I'm not here to say to anybody if somebody is on medication to change that that's done with the consultation of your gp what i'm talking about and the clients that i want to attract is if you feel a true resonance in your body and you will feel it because you 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 have that high level of sensation in your body and there are different types like we can be clear audience we can be clear cognizant we can be clairvoyant the clear, um, what's the one, the smell, clear, oh, I can't recall the name of it. Um, but all of these different, the four clears as we talk about. But when we learn how to hone the gifts of those and how to hone the gifts of our sensitivities, that's when we can thrive, okay? So we feel the subtleties in environments. We can tune in to people and places and pick up on things that, 80% of the population are oblivious to. So this is why we are the change makers, we are the healers, we are the counsellors, we're the caregivers. We are here to bring humanity to raise the level of consciousness on this planet at this point in time to a much higher level. So imagine being able to, and again, I'm just lie on your deathbed and know that you contributed to humanity in your own way, on your own way, whether that's through rearing a family, whether it's through being in your workplace, whether it's through your own setting, having your own business. Again, if you're a woman, a business, we do business in a different way. We don't do the hustle and grind because what that does is it burns us out. So we can be prone to burn out. I've been there, done that, worn the t-shirt. That's why I'm choosing to work part-time and create a lifestyle business as opposed to a business with lots of team members and all that that doesn't appeal to me at this point in time so again just i'm asking you to open up all of your senses and to become aware of what resonates the most with you as you can see i'm very passionate about this already because i'm in it i'm in the zone this is this is my life because this is who we are OK. So my aim is to bring more awareness to some of these aspects. I have pages of stuff written that I'm going to be sharing in bite sized pieces. Um, well, I, I have a tendency to go on a little bit, so I just forewarn you, you can watch the replay in this again. But take what take what resonates as being true for you. As I say, uh, we are passionate beings. We can't do small talk, but when we talk about deep, meaningful stuff, well, then it's like we go from that maybe introverted, highly sensitive woman 
to being someone who appears to be an extrovert. So that's because we are talking about what bring what makes us come alive, what brings passion, what brings purpose, what brings meaning and depth to us. So we're deep thinkers, we're deep feelers. This is an amazing gift to have, okay? You may be working in an environment at the moment that is just sucking the life force out of you and you want to change. You may be in a relationship at the moment that you know is just there's something off and um, something might need tweaking or it might need moving away completely from or there might be issues with siblings. There might be issues in different areas of your life. OK. But this can shift and change. And. If you're not already on my email list, I'm going to share a link after this live stream so that you sign up so that you can, you're the first to hear about when this um, sensitive solution does actually start and I take, I start taking the, the payment for it. Okay. So breathe and relax. I am just charged up. Like I'm on fire at the moment. And you know what? We love a bit of fun. You know, we love the crack. We love, as the Irish say, we love a bit of fun, but it doesn't come out of us unless we're in an environment where we're with our tribe and we feel understood and we feel seen and we feel heard and we feel held and we feel supported and we feel nourished. And these are all kind of pillars of what I'm going to. That is the core of my work, because I know how important that is for me. And I didn't have what I'm going to be offering as I was you know, going through the different stages of my development. So this is why it's a soul calling um, for me to deliver what I'm delivering now. So number one, do you feel like nobody understands you? So if you have your pen and paper, I want you to scale this on a, on a number zero to 10. How true does that feel for you? Have you felt that regularly? Do you feel that on a daily basis? Do you you know, what does it, how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel irritable, anxious? Does it make you feel, does it, are you repressing kind of anger and rage within you? Again, this is not wrong. This is how our sensitive bodies can react. But we're taught to be good girls, that good girl syndrome, that good girl archetype, like push it all down, be the people pleaser, be nice all the time. Well, yes, we, we are naturally loving, caring beings, but when we're not honoring our sensitivity or we're not honoring our need for um, doing the inner work and retreating energetically, that's when the imbalances and the disempowering energy comes into play. Now, how you're responding to life at the moment is impacted by the level of childhood trauma or adverse childhood experiences that you have experienced. So there can be different levels. My own experience, I experienced, I came up high on the adverse childhood experience score. You can Google it. Um, I was look, actually looking for some links for, for, for some of these quizzes, but I'm going to be sharing this in the group and we're going to be doing these um, and I'm going to be talking about them in a deeper way. So if you have grown up in a household where your needs were not met on an emotional, mental, physical, the whole spectrum of levels, more than likely you had no clue how to manage your sensitivity. Our parents at that time, and this is not, this is not a blame, shame, guilt trip. They didn't know because that information was not out there. I know my mother was a super highly sensitive woman. But she didn't know how to manage that sensitivity. So how could she teach me how to manage it if she didn't know how to manage it herself? So again, you might have been born into a family where there's there where that trait runs through the family. It's certainly quite high in my family of origin and relatives. So. It could be that, you know, if that unresolved trauma is still active and alive in your system, you're reacting versus, versus responding. So this is where I really, hand on heart, because I've done this work, say that the inner journey is non-negotiable. Does it happen overnight? No, it takes time, but I can teach you 
the techniques that has made the biggest, most profound difference in how I live my life and how now I really don't give a bleep if I become that emotional being and I'm the only one in the space that's crying because I'm deeply touched and deeply moved. Because it's like I have accepted that this is part of who I am and those levels of reaction change the more inner work we do and life becomes easier and you learn to love and embrace your sensitivity for the amazing superpower that it is. So let me know if what I'm sharing is resonating with you. Just type yes in the comments and we'll keep this energy. I really would love you to interact even by just saying yes. I know sometimes we can be very private beings. I understand that. But even by just saying yes or I agree with that or that makes sense. Let's get the energy of this live stream moving so that more women like us can find it. Okay. So what I've written here is sensitivity is at our core. So it's like you're you're this sensitive soul and you know, we can think of many sensitive souls, singers like Alanis Morissette is one that comes to mind who, thanks Tricia, who, you know, is openly highly sensitive. Her music moves people deeply. So if you, you we feel deeply, we're moved deeply. There is nothing, nothing wrong with us. It is not a weakness. If I was to, if you were to take anything away from today, I want you to realize that there is nothing wrong with you okay the world needs us as i said earlier we are the caregivers we are the people who are here to raise the vibration of the planet in our own way however there are um some disempowering habits and behaviors that we uh, that i recommend that we flip so that you're in a better more empowered state in your and your nervous system becomes calmer and more relaxed okay now um so if we're 20 percent of the population and 80 percent are non-sensitives why wouldn't we feel uncomfortable and again understanding their discomfort because they don't it's it, this is not when I say they, I'm, t I'm talking, I'm speaking generally here. This is not, there is, there is no group better than, this is not a hierarchy of someone is better than somebody else. This is just the way we're wired and there's scientific evidence for this. So, so there is a kind of a, a misunderstanding from both levels. So it's our job to actually be, be more open and express our sensitivity and say, well, actually, you know, um, I'm feeling tired at the moment or I'm feeling overwhelmed um, you know or or I, I'm sorry I can't really do like small talk is almost painful for us now we're great in Ireland here for talking about the weather now I can do that for about 30 seconds after that I'm like Phew. it's like and what I'm being called to say, to say is and this is my personal experience again let me know if this rings true is as you can see, when I'm talking about something passionate, you, you can't shut me up. But if I'm in a group and it's just small talk, it's like I shut down. It's like, it's like literally I, I shut down energetically because it's not nurturing my soul. It's not sparking that energy within me. It's actually dimming my light. It's numbing me down. And it's, it, it's kind of an automatic reaction. So again, this is normal. Um, you might experience, um, you might feel uncomfortable. You might feel that other people are uncomfortable. For example, if you're getting emotional, um, you might feel other people's discomfort. And then in turn, because you feel that, it actually makes you either consciously or unconsciously shut down even more. So this is all about repressing, suppressing, which is not good for mental emotional physical spiritual bodies okay we can feel tired we can feel overwhelmed we can be prone to perfection we can be prone to avoidance adrenal fatigue chronic fatigue is very common in highly sensitive i've done that journey but i have to say 
I'm actually thankful for the time that literally I could hardly walk around the house. I was so burnt out because it brought me on the journey of training in different modalities and the, the deep, profound healing journey that I have been on over the last number of years that now helps me to empower women like you to literally transform your life from the inside out. So, but I'm here to actually help you to not go into that state because it can take quite a long time to come out of that fatigue if you don't know how to manage your emotional uh, um, state and to let go of the old habits and the old beliefs and ancestral energy and all of that stuff. We can be highly sensitive and also empathic. So by empathic, I mean is that we can absorb other people's energies. And I'm going to give you an example of one time in my life, just, just one, there are many, but one time in my life, we were moved from a particular building where I worked with, worked in for many years. And for the last few years, I had my own little office and it was bliss because I could, I had my own space and I could be in my own space and there was less noise and I could concentrate and I could focus better. Then we were moved to an open plan office with lots of people around me and um, you know just the partitions between people lots of phones ringing lots of noise lots of chatting as people are dealing with the work and dealing with phone calls and whatever it used to wreck my head and over time i was like i cannot live like this this was a permanent pensionable very well paid job and i was like i can't do this this is not who i am i'm here to do something different I used to go to the toilet to get some respite, do some breathing, do some tapping at the time. I used to go outside at tea breaks because I needed to recharge. I needed to go out. I needed the fresh air. I needed to be around even the small little bit of green grass that was around the building. And I have no doubt that people used to look at me and think, oh my God, she's kind of odd or, you know, she's whatever. You know it doesn't it doesn't really matter now at the time i might have been you know felt a bit upset that i felt different or misunderstood but now i can clearly see it was part of my journey so this is not unusual for highly sensitive so you might feel that you need to move out of a particular space so that you can literally get your breath and i'm going to be talking about grounding i'm going to teach you very simple ways about grounding i had no clue about grounding until I started on, on training on the different modalities that I'm qualified in now. Because, and I also remember walking into the office and I'd be in good form and I'd do some tapping and I'd have my energy prepped and I'd have a good breakfast and I'd feel in good form. And I'm not joking you, within a few seconds of being in that environment, I could pick up on some of the down energy of other people because some people might not have necessarily been happy in that environment either but they felt they were stuck they didn't feel see any other way out and i used to feel my energy just going push and i'm like oh for sake this is crazy i uh, because i was absorbing their energy okay and again this this is where i come in and i will teach you simple ways in which you can release energy that you are absorbing from people, from places, from your environment. It's non-negotiable. Okay, so that's 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 the example of feeling good and then you kind of feel like your energy is depleted. Uh, you might feel exhausted after being around certain people. You might feel exhausted after being in particular environments. Again, we need to know how to manage this. Noise, you can be very sensitive to noise. I remember music playing and kind of saying, oh my God, that's very loud. Can we turn it down? And other people were like, God, I don't even hear it. I'm like, how the heck can you not hear that? It's loud. <laughs> so again, these are just examples of my own personal experience. So we've, we're here to do business differently. So if you have a business, you know, there can be blocks and expectations that you have the same stamina and that you can go into the you know, be, being available all of the time and working the nine to five or even longer hours in business, it doesn't work for us sensitives because we end up being burnt out and we don't complete projects and tasks. If we don't listen to what our mind, our body, our soul are calling, okay? So what we want to do is we want to bring in more peace and calm more of the time. 
I'm just going to pause and take a breath. I know I've been given a lot of information because it's literally when this starts, it pours out of me because this is my life's work. It's my life's experience. I have a soul calling to do this work. I can't ignore it. Even if I go into periods of fatigue myself, it keeps coming back because it's like, knock, 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 Dervly, your soul has agreed to do this. You've got to show up. You've got to talk about this. Okay, so how are we doing? <laughs> Thanks for staying with me. So take a drink of water. Let's let the energy process. Water is very important. Pure water to keep us hydrated. Excuse me. I normally don't like drinking water uh, on live streams, but I need it. And a reminder for you to take some. So next I'm going to talk about, you know, have you ever heard, oh my God, you're so sensitive or you're too sensitive. And as I'm speaking now, I remember my father saying to me, oh, your bladder is very close to your eyes, meaning that I cried quite easily because especially as a young child I was highly sensitive. Again, parents hadn't a clue, no disrespect to them, how to kind of manage that. Um, again, we can feel hurt by flippant remarks um, uh, and again if our childhood needs aren't met if the flippant remarks are there and we start to cry what are we needing in that point in time we're needing comfort we're needing a hug we're needing reassurance we're needing love and acceptance so if we haven't got that consistently throughout our childhood years then it just leads to all sorts of issues no matter what age we are I'm well in my 50s now so I'm still learning about this but I have lots that I can share. Um, again, I spoke earlier about, you know, are your parents sensitive, whether they're past or, or, or still alive, are your siblings sensitive? And I was at a, a, a funeral recently of a relative and, oh, I could clearly see the sensitive trait coming through in men and in the women. And of course, I was a deeply moved by some of the music at the funeral. Um, there are certain certain notes certain vibrations that just get me every time and I, you know my husband knows at this stage i always have the tissues with me my daughter says oh my god you, you have tissues in your pocket because i have them because i know that if the vibration hits my soul the tears will come and I will be doing simple breathing and I'll be doing little tips and techniques kind of on the spot to kind of realign myself. Um, but I no longer apologize for that. So I just let myself cry and I no longer apologize for that. I have to say that again, because before I used to think, oh, my God, what are they thinking of me um, again? You know, you know, that look is like, ah, oh, sure, my God, love her. Sure, she's crying again, kind of thing, you know. And I'm like, no, I, 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 I've got to do this because I'm feeling this emotion. Of course, I'm feeling the grief. So why wouldn't I cry? Isn't it better to let this grief up and out than suppressing it and being numb and walking around sleepwalking? Like, you know, I, I really prefer to be able to do this than to be numb and this is no disrespect because people are not taught this stuff this is where i have to come in and speak up and do this work so what um again it's like don't apologize for not liking what 80 percent of the of the of the um population like so that can be um no i'll come to that other one in a second so again it's important that we have our tribe that we're in a sacred safe haven like sensitive solution is what i'm creating so that we can talk about this and it's not just about talking because talking is great feeling understood feeling heard feeling witnessed feeling held feeling supported feeling loved and accepted and allowing you to love and you accept yourself more and more each day brings more confidence more self-esteem it helps you to feel more grounded as helps you to stand in your power it helps you to create stronger boundaries, have a stronger yes, have a stronger no, and move through the discomfort because there is a gap of, we say, if we're here, uh, 
we want to go to here so there's this gap so there might be a level of discomfort as we move through that and as we heal the different parts of us um, as we move through the healing process okay um this is where tribe is very important um so what else do i want to say about that so again let me know have you ever been told that you're too sensitive you know on a scale again on a scale of zero to ten i'm too sensitive how true does that feel in your body now before if i tested that it would have it would have been a 10 absolutely true now it's like no because i know that my sensitivity is my superpower can that fluctuate yeah at times if i'm mostly uh, if i'm kind of in a scenario where um where it's i suppose maybe those ceremonies whether they're births deaths marriages or whatever um and I might be in the minority where I'm emotionally moved and I might have kind of fleeting thoughts in my head, in my head going, oh, crikey, Sterling, here you go again. But I quickly, excuse me, I quickly catch myself and come back into actually, no, this is OK, because isn't there great tenderness? Isn't there great depths in a soul? who feels to these levels of depths, that's why we are the people to hold a sacred space for others, whether, as I said, it's in our, whether it's in our families, whether it's through our work, whether it's through our business, we are actually the people who people will go to when they want, uh, you know, when they want somebody to have a chat with. Now, I overdid that because I was actually too open energetically to be the counsellor in, in workplaces. When it got to the point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm holding the space for these people. I can't do this. It's too much. And then I learned boundaries. I learned about boundaries. I learned about saying, you know, I'm unavailable at this point in time, whatever way. And that can bring a level of discomfort for people who all of a sudden, you know, you were you were the go to person and you were available all of the time. It's like, oh, sure, Darvla will listen to me or oh, sure, I'll go into Darvla for the chat and she'll understand and she'll listen to me and pep talk. And then you end up feeling exhausted because you don't know how to actually disconnect from that energy. Um, it's time to actually learn really strong, crystal clear boundaries about what you're available for and what you're not available for and to become more aware of you know who raises your vibration and who depletes your vibration again so much more there's small points but you can see how much depth that we can go into with this and this is why it's really important to get your tribe okay so that's that that's all i'm going to say on that one for today i'm conscious uh as you can see there's so much material here so much so the next one is, have you ever felt like you're from a different planet? Again, I feel like I'm from a different planet. Say that out loud. Zero to ten. How true does that feel? I'm just going to pause for a minute. I'm going to let you digest that because I know I'm giving you a lot of information and I don't want to overload your senses. So I'm just going to pause for a minute. OK, I'm going to have a drink of water. And then I'll come back to the third point. So if you want to have a drink of water, maybe to move your body, to write a few notes, just do that. And then I'll come back to the next point or comment. You know, is there something in particular that's resonating with you at the moment? Let me know in the comments. Or if there's any questions you have. And breathe. And breathe. Okay. So, I mentioned earlier, but I'm going to say it again. There were times when I told myself I felt like an alien. I felt like I was from a different planet because there were things that I could see clearly that 
I felt would really help people to feel better in themselves but they were ignoring or maybe there were behaviours that I felt were really self-sabotage behaviours. Again, we're not here to change someone. As they say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Um, unfortunately, the downside of highly sensitive is, is if we go into that disempowered state of numbing our emotions, whether that's through food. For me, when I was younger, I used to definitely I was a chocoholic. I ate chocolate morning, noon and night. Um, it didn't. I was fortunate enough that I didn't actually put on a huge lot of weight because of the sugar, but it affected my brain, it affected my gut, it affected my moods, um, and it created um, uh, inflammation in my body over time. That brought me on a whole other learning journey of healing from the inside out on a physical level as well. Um, I often say that I don't have degrees in uh, certain aspects of healing, but I certainly have massive life experience, which oftentimes is more valuable. Okay, so have you ever felt like you're from a different planet? You know, and for me, even one thing as I'm speaking out loud now is, you know, the phones. The phones are great. I'm communicating with you here right now. But how many people are, are sleepwalking with their heads down, with their heads in the phone because they become addicted to the phones? That's the nature of them. They're there to hook you in. They're there to kind of bring your brain into that hypnotized state. So we've got to be very mindful of what we're doing. But in all of that, people are missing out on connection. And for sensitives, we want deep connection. We want depth in conversations. We want depth and experience, we want joy, we want laughter, we want love, we want connection, we want all of that. And why wouldn't we have all of that? But we get all of that when we give that to ourselves, first of all. When we learn to let go of the old beliefs about being sensitive, and I'll be exploring this deeper. And again, you can work with me one-to-one -one as, as well, is another option where we go in to whatever is showing up for you on a deep, profound level. So what this can do then, if you're feeling like an alien, we can go into avoidance tactics. So we can go into isolating ourselves. Now, I love spending a lot of quiet time on my own. It recharges my batteries. When I didn't have that, uh, working the nine to five, rearing a family, doing everything, all the things, all the responsibilities we have. Um, I didn't realize how much that was such a life force food for me. Because when I have quiet time and I do not start work early, deliberately, because I allow myself to have journaling time, meditative time, tapping time, having my breakfast in bed if I want to, because I've done the nine to five stuff, ain't going there again. Um, I know there are many sensitives. I have clients at the moment who really want to come out of that environment. They're working through it at the moment. It can be challenging. I understand. But what I know without a shadow of a doubt is that quiet time is non-negotiable for me every day, every day. And we are not, I, I have I have a word, I have, again, there is nothing wrong with that. Because if you're more of an extrovert, you can be, okay, sensitive and an extrovert. But in my experience, most of the women I've worked would be, have more introverted tendencies. And as I said earlier, we can be extroverted in nature when we're with our tribe or when we are having a conversation that lights us up and we could talk for hours and hours and hours that nourishes us, that energizes us. It's very different to being in an environment talking about whatever that doesn't light you up or watching the news and the violence on television. I can't do that. I, I actually cringe. I have to leave the room at times because I just, I just, I'm not interested in it. It's not about burying your head in the sand because we're going to hear what's going to go on in the, in the bigger scale of things, regardless of conversations, unless we're living under a stone. 
what I'm talking about, I consciously remove myself from the news, violent movies, you know, um, sometimes if my hubby is watching a movie and I'm like, there's AI, why is it so violent? I remove myself from the room and I go and I write or I read or I do something. I can't sit there. So again, this is about learning to feel okay with that. That actually say, well, I'm not okay with that movie. You can watch it on your own and I'm off <laughs> to a different part of the house. There's nothing wrong with that. So we've got to stop making these things wrong about ourselves. And, you know, we might have told ourselves or heard, you know, toughen up. We've got to toughen up. Well, F that. No, we can empower ourselves. We can bring inner strength into us. I'm not talking about being tough where you're removed from your emotional state or you're closed off and you're you have this kind of tough woman syndrome. But inside you're really this soft, loving, beautiful, cherished soul that just wants to express yourself in such a different way. All that will do will bring resentment, bitterness, dis-ease in your mental, emotional, physical and spiritual body. So I'm here to help you to learn to calm and relax more, to build stronger boundaries in your energy system, to learn to express your needs, your wants, your desires, because often our throat chakra is closed. We haven't been taught about how to communicate. I've been on such a learning journey about this myself, is even asking for the simple things, because do you know why? Because we are so freaking good at helping everybody else, helping everybody else out. We're the natural caregivers and we love doing it. But we need to check in at what cost. And like saying, OK, actually, I'm feeling tired today. I'm unavailable to meet you or I'm unavailable for a call or even the thing of not responding to text messages as soon as you get them. Power in the pause, pausing before you respond so that you're not caught into a conversation that's going to take 10 minutes of your time when really what was, was more of a priority was for you to be quiet and still. Or to eat your dinner in peace. Or to talk to your child without interruptions. Whatever it is. So it's about finding out what are my priorities what is what is my heart and my soul calling for what do i need to let go of what do i need to bring in how can how can i create this sacred space within me so that from that space my light the wisdom the knowledge and the unique vibration of my soul can shine through and as you can see, like this, 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 while well, apart from notes, this is not scripted because this is who I am. So I don't need to have loads of slides. I have prompts to keep me because I know I can get, I can go on. Uh, I can go on. Um, okay. So how does that resonate? How does that resonate? Now, I'm coming, I'm going to go through these. I cannot believe I'm on so long. Anyways, I'm, I'm trusting that exactly what I say. I always ask that whatever I say, even if it's for one woman to hear that my job is done. Uh, but I'm sincerely hoping, feel free to share this with your friends. Feel free to share it on your page. Share this word. Um, so feeling uh, overwhelmed in groups. Uh, our large crowds. So again, I, I touched on this briefly about being empathic. You're taking up, you're, you're absorbing energy and maybe you don't know how to do that. So again, is, whose energy is it? There are simple exercises I can teach you and release energy that is not yours. Noise, TVs, there's a restaurant that was renovated recently uh, in the county. And when I walked in, I was so looking forward to the renovations and I was so disappointed. Because not only was there one big screen in the restaurant, there were about four. And I'm like, oh, my God, everyone has a television at home. I don't come out to watch the television. I come out 
to have a conversation with whoever I'm having lunch or I don't drink alcohol. That's that's a whole other conversation for sensitives. I've chose to never drink alcohol. That's a whole other story. Um, but whoever I'm I'm socializing with, I haven't gone back there since because it's just there's too much noise. There's just too much noise. Big concerts, you know, um, again, I'm mindful of events that I go to. So again, if I choose to go to a concert, if I want to listen to a musician, um, I choose to sit in a space where I can access the toilet quite easily, where I can access an exit quite easily. I don't like being in the middle of, of a row of people. I like a bit of space around me, so I tend to sit on the outside. Does do you notice? Do you do that unconsciously? Okay, it makes a difference. Um, there can be there. You know, there are a lot of great change makers out there, but I do I I choose not to go to events where there are thousands of people at an event. And where there are the big screens, the noise, the rah-rah music, the, all of this stuff, it's, it overstimulates my nervous system. I would need a week off to recover after something like that. And I'm sharing this just because does this ring true for you? Again, in groups, I talked about it. We like deep conversation. We, we, can, we can't do small talk for long. Um, we're picking up on, on other energies. Um, and again, I can teach you simple techniques that can help you with this because we can't live in a bubble. We can I, we, I can teach you energetic bubble techniques, but we're here to interact with humans. We're here to travel. We're here to explore. We're here to expand and um, being at home all the time is not the solution. Um, but we can learn techniques that help us when we do go out into the public arena. OK. And the last one, and thank you so much for staying with me. I really do appreciate you taking the time. You're too soft. Have you heard this or maybe you've told this yourself? Again, we can tell ourselves these disempowering stories. I heard this several months ago when I was at an event. And it was a celebration. But it was a celebration not long after there was a lot of grief in my life. And someone got up and started making a little speech. And I was so deeply moved. And of course, the tears were rolling. And other people were moved by this young gentleman's speech. Um, and maybe out of 50, there might have been. Two or three of us with tears in our eyes. And yeah, some uh, was at least, yeah, maybe maybe more, but um, men and women, because we were moved. And someone beside me said, you're very soft, Dervla. You're very soft. Now in my brain at that time, I took that to mean, momentarily, you're weak, Dervla. But I quickly understood that what I was experiencing was perfectly natural and normal for me. And there were no apologies needed for my emotional expression. So I'm just sharing that because, again, someone who's not sensitive, won't fully understand what it's like being highly sensitive. It's a bit like having a child. Until we give birth and rear children ourselves, we, we might think we know what it's like to have a child or rear a child, but until we have it, we don't really understand. It's the same with these sensitive traits and feelings and behaviours. Okay? So, again, I am here to encourage you not to close down not to numb your sensitivity, not to repress it. Energy and all of those tears are better out than in because stress creates inflammation and disease in bodies. And this is why the work that I do is so important. 
So I'm going to wind up with this and I sincerely appreciate every person who has listened to this live stream because I know you're resonating with me on a soul level. So you can reach out. Uh, I have limited spaces to work with me one to one or you can sign up to my email list if you're not there already where you'll be finding out about I don't have the start date set as yet but I am. It's looking like September because I want to promote this. And if you can help me in promoting this live stream by sharing it with your friends or tagging people in the post, I would really appreciate that. Because remember, you might really save someone's sanity because sometimes we can maybe in the depths of despair for going through a challenging time, feel like we are going a little bit crazy, but we're not. OK, so what I'm creating is a sacred haven, a safe haven for sensitive women to thrive where we share the, I will share the knowledge and the wisdom, you will share yours because you will have stuff that will help me. And likewise, I will hold that sacred space for you to learn to love and accept yourself more, to have more of a deep connection with your mind, your body and soul. There's respect, there's care, there's nourishment, there's an opportunity for growth and expansion, where I'll teach you how to ground yourself and um, going from disempowered to empowered, from realizing that sensitivity is your superpower, that there's strength in your sensitivity and that the world needs us to show up in our new unique expression of our sensitivity. We'll unravel the limiting beliefs around it. I'll be giving you very simple journaling prompts that can open up things in your subconscious mind that you had no idea were lurking in there. Daily practices to help you and um, navigate the world. There'll be group healing through Zoom calls. There'll be questions and answers. The investment at the moment, the investment price I've been given is 55 euros a month because there is going to be deep, profound healing in that. At the same time, I am conscious that I'm not going to overload you with stuff. I have a tendency to over give because there's so much knowledge and wisdom within me. It's really calling to come out. And this is a space for me to express this as well. Um, and I've got a very strong soul intuitive nudge to do this. The name of the group came to me in 2017, a few months actually after I left my permanent pension with the job, but it wasn't ripe enough for me to open it until now. For a number of reasons, I was brought on very deep, uh, profound healing journeys. I was thrown into grief quite suddenly on a number of occasions over the last few years. So I had to process that, navigate menopausal stuff um, and whatever other life stuff had to be moved through and living and healing myself and navigating business and learning about different things um, and honing my skill. So it's time. So if this interests you, um, you can private message me, you know, private message me if you feel there's something you want to share about this live stream that you don't want to post publicly. I would really love you to message me so that I can I can I can acknowledge you and that we can um, have that giving and that receiving energy because I'm giving all of this. I'm pouring this out into you and you will receive what you're ready to receive at this point in time. So I suggest that you come back and listen to this again, you know, take some time out now, allow your system to absorb it and notice over the next few days if there's something in particular that I've said that might come back into your awareness again. Just take note of it. Be curious, be curious about your sensitivity, be curious about how you're living your life um, either from an empowered state or a disempowered state um, because the shadow and the light, it's all part of being human. That's how we grow and evolve. So I'm going to pause and just wait and see if you have any questions, any comments. How did you, um, you know, is there one big takeaway that you have from today? Uh, let me know. Um, so you see, and again, this is, this is what I'm going to leave you with. I posted four simple prompts on my page the other day. There is no way I could have written. Well, I could have, but it's part of a book, possibly. The depths of the response that I have shared 
with you in doing this live because when I'm live the energy is live it's potent it's powerful it's I express myself easier in spoken term uh, this is why um, I'm here at home in my office with nobody around me but you are connected with me on a soul soul level and I know because I've set the intention that any other woman who's meant to hear this it will land in her lap when she's meant to hear it. If I was to stand up in front of a thousand people and give this same talk, would I find it as easy? No, I wouldn't. Hand on heart, I wouldn't. Because I'd be picking up on all the nuances in the room. Might I do that someday? Who knows? It might be part of my plan. I don't know. But right now, uh, this suits me perfectly. This or down the line, in person, intimate, small, sacred groups uh, is what I'm feeling called to do. So, I hope that you have received value and insight and wisdom and inspiration from our chat today. Um, I appreciate your presence and I really would love your feedback. So again, if you don't want to post something on this public page, private message me and I respond to you as soon as I can. I'll post the email link so that you stay on my list, so that you uh, are made aware of developments moving forward over the next few weeks. Stay tuned on my page if you haven't already liked it or follow this page so that you get notifications. I'm going to be doing more live streams about being sensitive. I'm going to pick different topics and expand on them because I want to open up this conversation because I'm here to deliver this in my unique way and um, share my knowledge and my wisdom and how and inspire you to transform your life so that you can thrive because you can and you will all you've got to do is say yes to you and if you're called on a soul level to join me either one-to-one -one or in my sensitive solution space, say yes. You will be so glad you did and I would love to have you there. So sending you lots of love. Look after yourself, take care and I'll be in very soon when I decide what's the next live stream will be about or if I get an intuitive hit which sometimes I do I follow them and I come on so take care have a great evening day night whenever you're watching this and um, know that sensitivity is your greatest gift take care bye